Hi, and welcome to Cryptobiography. I'm your host, Brandon Starr, and this is episode 154. It's going to be part two of The Island. And if you have any comments or questions about this episode or previous episodes, cryptobiography at gmail.com or hit us up on Facebook or Twitter. And here we go. As they paddled and rowed back, Carden heard Morgan playing with her new mouse doll. She was teaching her to fish. He saw her pull the, her line pull a bit as she said, Sometimes it helps, Miss Whiskers, to wiggle the line and make it look like the bait is extra tasty. He saw Kira's line wiggle just afterward. He was following Morgan's lead. Tristan, who had said nothing as they loaded the boat, nor anything else yet, Carden wondered about that. He wondered if he had felt ashamed because he had frozen when his much younger brother had dived in and helped that boy. He decided he would talk to him later when it was private. Perhaps he should discuss thing, the matter with Gwen first. Yes, that would be best. When they pulled into the cove and up to their own small pier, reasonably protected from the waves, Carden climbed out. The kids knew what their duties were. Tristan would see to the boat, and Morgan and Kier would take care of the linens. Carden walked back to the house. He needed to go get washed, but wanted to give the leftover money and the beef jerky to Gwen. As he walked up to the house, he saw Duncan, their neighbor, leaving by the back door, which is the side closest to the house where Duncan and his two wives lived. Carden walked in and saw that Gwen was naked in their room. He stopped. Duncan? he asked. Yes, she replied. Since when? Less than a month. Why not bring it up with me first? I... She said and just stopped. I have no hold on you, he said. I didn't know you needed someone else in your bed. I guess I'm confused. I am too, she said. Her head drooped and Carden could only see her waves of curly light brown hair covering her face. I have questions. But I think we should talk later, Carden said. Care saved a boy's life today in town. Tristan, you mean? she asked. No, Carden replied. The boy was drowning. Kier drove in, drove in and got him, dragged him close enough to shore for me to pull him out and get the water out of him. Remarkable, Gwen said. She was looking at him again. Carden nodded. I have a few things to say about that, too, later on, he said, thinking of Tristan. When we can be private. Okay, she said, clearly wondering what that would be. The money, Carden said. He walked over to her and put it in her hand. For some reason, he sounded stiff saying it. It's never been like that with Gwen, he thought to himself. This Duncan thing was affecting him more than it ought. But then it was news to him. Carden went outside and saw that Morgan and Kier had brought the linens in from the fish sale to the washing room. The island had several natural streams, and they had built their home by one for the many uses it could be put to. The washroom was a one-room shack very near the stream, and they had diverted some of the water through the room, though it could also be shut off with a board. The water would then back up and return to the stream. Morgan had put Miss Whiskers on the little shelf near the door and was instructing her on the proper way to wash the linens. Care watched her. Morgan looked up at Carden, and he nodded and smiled at her. Tristan hadn't come up to the house, and Carden decided to go looking for him. It didn't take long. He was on the pier. He wasn't fishing, or indeed doing much of anything. The boat had been properly secured, but after that he must have simply gone to the edge of the pier and sat down cross-legged. Carden sat down next to him. He suspected he knew what Tristan was thinking about, but didn't want to be the one to bring it up, partly in case it actually wasn't true but also so he didn't accidentally shame his son. But that left him not knowing what to say. Tristan looked at the water below. A few fish were visible, slowly swimming into the shadow of the pier. Strange market day, Carden remarked. He didn't say, he didn't dare say anything more specific. Yeah, Tristan agreed. You were a big help today, getting there, at the stall, getting home. Thanks. Father? Yes? It should have been me. 
What makes you say that? Care is six. I know he swims well and all, but I should have done it. Should have jumped in. But I saw the blood on the boat, and I just froze. I didn't jump in either, not before Kier. You were a little behind us, and you had the cloths and all. This is bothering you, isn't it? Tristan didn't say anything. He put his head down almost flat on the pier. You know, you had an uncle, Tristan. My brother? Yeah, he died when he was young. Yes, but I won't talk about how. Tristan looked up. No, you don't. Carden took a while. He hadn't thought about it in a long time. He put those feelings away. They'd done no one any good. He was my younger brother. My only full sibling. Tristan. Gwen was kind enough to name you after him. He was your age. I was one counting older. We were out on the boat in the evening. We'd done our work for the day, and we're just out to mostly float around, maybe put a line in here and there. To this day, I'm not sure how it happened. Tristan put the anchor over, and he went with it. Somehow he got caught in the line. I scrambled to that side of the boat and looked down. He was already almost out of sight. I dove in. He could see Tristan looking at him. He could see the unasked question in his eyes. Why was he telling him this story if he didn't freeze as he had? I tried to catch up with him, but weighed down by the stone anchor he was going too fast. That was when I felt the line moving past my shoulder. I then realized that I could have stayed up on the boat, tied the line firm, and then pulled him back in. I also realized that he wouldn't be dragged down so quickly if he'd been awake and alert. He was a good swimmer. Even with the anchor, if he were fighting, he'd be going down slowly, unevenly. Instead, he was going to the depths fast and at one rate. Far underwater, ears screaming from the pressure, I was too deep down to go back up, get into the boat, and then hope to pull him in. Instead, I did what I could. I grabbed the rope and started swimming upward as hard as I could. It was useless. I was barely going upward at all against the weight of the stone, and I was running out of breath. I let go of the rope and swam up back towards the boat. I climbed in as fast as I could, then started hauling on the rope. It had gone slack by the time I got in. The anchor was at the bottom, but the rope was nearly at its full length. The rope coiled in the bottom of the boat as I pulled. All the while, I looked at the blood on the side of the boat, where he'd hit his head, much like the red-headed boy today. He finally came up. I pulled him in. I tried to get him to breathe again, but I could not. He was gone. Look, you froze. I made a terrible decision that left me unable to help. Neither is great. And maybe you feel as badly as you do today as I did, but horrible situations don't have perfect answers. Or even if they do, you may not choose the right one at the time. I didn't. Cardin fell silent. He could feel Tristan beside him. Eventually Tristan stood up, put his hand on Cardin's shoulder. Then the boy turned and went back home. Cardin watched the sun slowly move towards the sea for a while then joined him. And that's the story for today. I'm going to actually continue this story. I'm, I like the characters and I actually have some other things to say and some other story bits to do. Um, although this is actually kind of an interesting stopping point, but uh hope you enjoyed it. If you have any comments or questions about this episode or previous episodes, cryptobiography at gmail.com or hit us up on Facebook or Twitter, and thanks for listening. Words of Music Copyright 2020 Cryptobiography LLC All Rights Reserved Characters and Events are fictional, fictionalized, or satirical.